By the age of seven, Ashanti Jones had had more adversity and trauma in her life than most might ever have in a lifetime. There's so much to unpack from seven. Home was in the hood in Patterson, the now replaced Alabama Avenue public housing, a drug trafficking father in prison, a drug addiction that imprisoned her mother's mind, body, and soul. So much dysfunction replaced protective parenting that their children, Ashanti and two brothers, thought it was normal to eat raw hot dogs. Then one day. It was troubling. I mean, you know, seeing DIFUS workers and police officers uh, come and take your mom away, like in front of you, and, and seeing all of that. The state separated Ashanti from her brothers. She went to live with strangers. So it was kind of like, you know, what was going on? I was, I was confused. I was upset. Um, and it was just a lot of uncertainty. Ten plus years of multiple foster homes, ten schools, ten years of yearning for a mother who would sign away her maternal rights, Ten years of underachieving and misbehaving. I had really regressive behaviors, um, and, and uh, so I was in therapy. I actually did do like an inpatient program at one point for like severe behavioral issues um, because I was like damaging property, like being really harmful. I wasn't able to connect with people. Uh, I wasn't interested in having friendships. Trauma personified. That was a couple years after the landmark CDC Kaiser Adverse Childhood Experiences Survey of more than 17,000 Californians. The survey found the more adverse experiences, such as abuse, violence, household dysfunction by 18 years of age, the greater the risk of developmental issues, chronic disease, and even early death. The respondents, mostly white, middle class, and college educated. So what that blew the lid off of was that this is their problem. This is an other issue. It was made very clear that ACEs impact all aspects of the economic strata, all races, all education levels, and that's both liberating and overwhelming. Carrie Lagoso Miserell leads the Greater Newark Healthcare Coalition, one of six national grant recipients of the Hamilton based Center for Healthcare Strategies. The coalition devises and coordinates trauma informed care, such as this Building a Culture of Health in Newark event, convening national researchers and nonprofits to share best practices. We all are impacted to one degree or another mm -hmm. by ACEs, so it's personal for all of us to different degrees. Right. However, turned a different way, it also levels the playing field and makes this really more of a human issue that bonds us if approached correctly and will help us help each other. In September, the first national ACEs study of more than 214,000 respondents found nearly 62% had one adverse experience, nearly a quarter had three or more. Significantly higher ACE exposures were reported by participants identified as black, Hispanic, multiracial, less than a high school education, income of less than 15,000, unemployed, gay, lesbian, bisexual, compared to those white, straight, employed, and with more education and higher income. The most prevalent ACE exposures, parental separation or divorce, and emotional and substance abuse. A separate upcoming report for these three funders shows four in ten children in New Jersey have had one adverse childhood experience. The risk for multiple ACEs is higher for children from communities with high violence, low incomes, and in the child welfare and juvenile justice systems. The most common ACEs in New Jersey? Living in economic hardship, family dysfunction, and with substance use disorder. All factors that medical science has shown can elevate cortisol levels and interfere with the brain's and the body's ability to function. A recent Harvard study reports childhood abuse is associated with sperm DNA methylation, or modification of the genome and how it functions, which may have implications for offspring development. Other researchers hypothesize a pregnant woman's exposure to chronic stress and trauma and other influences can even alter an embryo's organs in the womb and reduce their function after birth. Dr. Natalie Slopin of the University of Maryland School of Public Health compares prolonged exposure to toxic stress to revving up a car and overstressing its engine, so much so that it never runs the same way again. There are multiple ways that a um, like childhood trauma or prolonged chronic stress in childhood could impact the outcomes that we see 30, 40, 50 years after the childhood stress. So it could be the case that there are these um, 
biological changes happening early in life, um, like let's say changes to neural structure and function or yeah. elevated of le levels of inflammation that put individuals on a trajectory of altered biology. Dr. Slopin says scientists are actively trying to determine how early they can detect those biological changes that can predict preventable diseases later in life, diseases that research shows can shorten those lives by 20 years. There's clear evidence that adverse childhood experiences are associated with uh, cardiovascular diseases. Um, the question is, when do those risks become apparent? Um, and there's several reasons we're really interested in that question. We're interested in understanding these early biomarkers of uh, that connect adverse childhood experiences to later chronic health conditions because understanding um, whether or not an individual is presenting those biomarkers of risk allow us to um, identify children who may be most in need of intervention services. Um, and second, it could allow us to evaluate whether prevention-oriented interventions are actually effective. The mission takes us back to Ashanti Jones, the trauma she endured as a child and adolescent, and her behavioral struggles and what might happen to her. Here's what's known about the last decade. At 17 here at West Orange High School, Ashanti came to a realization about one, that longing for her mother, and two, the life she had to lead and the life she had to live. The life that I have, it's mine, and I can't, I can't put it into, uh, I can't put all of me in, in this basket that no one's ever going to pick up. A better future, a better outcome relied on Ashanti making a better and remarkable effort. You're sitting here telling me that at 17 years old, you initiated going to the guidance counselor telling the guidance counselor that you wanted a better outcome for your life and you're 17 years old and then you went from a near failing student to the next year a straight A student is that what you're telling me absolutely um, so that, that's where it was because it was about it was about investment of time so like before then my mind was so clouded with um, my mom wasn't an example of someone you know who made it in life uh, so I wasn't thinking about making it in life I was just thinking about being with my mom and whatever came after that came after that um, whatever came after that came after that but you know um, at this point, I, I was trying to prove something. So I was proving that I was above, like I didn't need, I don't need you, you know? Um, and so it had to be about me. And I knew that, you know, I wanted to be someone I was proud of. And I knew that I wanted to have kids one day and I never wanted to put them through anything like what I've been through. Ashanti would double major in psychology and Africana world studies at William Patterson University. In May, she graduated from Columbia University with a master's degree in science and social work. Today, that detached teen who couldn't connect with others is married with a year-old son and coordinates the Neighborhood Ally Program at the South Ward Children's Alliance, connecting families to trauma-informed services. That's our next report. Michael Hill, NJTV News.